Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes, celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it's show number 160, and among today's topics at the Irish Roots Cafe, the family name of the day is McFadden. The Irish Book of the Month is The Malaysian Families of Ireland. Uh, Number three, Searching for Kylie, Kennedy, Quinlan, and Cronin. And number four, The Curious News is The First Irish-Born Imam in Ireland. Number five, Web Page of the Month, and that's River Dance with Guns. Number six, a curious note, Irish millionaires, are there more or less of them this year? And number seven, the one-minute podcast by Mac and O. You'll always know a true Irishman, they say, for he wears his Irish afore his name each and every day. Oh, we got all that and more today. Plenty coming up here, so stay tuned, and uh, we'll be right back with you in just a few seconds. Well, we've got plenty of notes this week, too. And hey, before I forget, remember that we have three types of podcasts. Uh, Number one, they're free for all. Number two, we have old ones that are archived. And number three, we have some member-only podcasts that have been heard when they were first broadcast, but they've been put in the archive now, so remember that. And we also have a regular podcast, an enhanced podcast, and video podcast. So be sure to check it all out at irishroots.com. Now let's take a look at what's happening at the Irish Roots Cafe uh, this week. Uh, Let me see. The Irish in America broadcast is up and running for its third season, so be sure to listen in to the interviews that we took at the Irish uh, Browns Irish Street Fair over the last couple of years. And they're going to be running for about two months, so that's good news for that podcast. Number uh, two, let me see. We've got uh, two million records for County Kerry, Cork, Dublin, and Carlow that have gone online at irishgenealogy.ie. Got a link on the blog. And that definitely includes a lot of Dublin City and Church of Ireland records there, too. Uh, personally, I'm interested in the Kerry records. That's where those Donahues come from. And additionally, there's one million more records going online uh, by the end of the year. And that's in addition to the 1901 census that recently went online. So we've got some amazing numbers here, folks. Uh, the problem isn't the uh, amount of records. It's sorting out which ones are helpful to you. And number three, the current season for the Hello Fada Irish podcast and the Irish Hedgerow History podcast will be ended next month, so uh, be sure to listen in before we close out that season and let us know what you think. Be right back with you in just a few seconds. <laughs> Hey, now it's time for the uh, one-minute podcast, and we're taking that uh, from one of our seven podcast series that we've got out there. And we're taking this one from the Hello Fada Irish Language Podcast, uh, Notes for the Curious. And uh, this one's all about Mac and O and Irish prefixes, so to speak, before names. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about there, but you might want to listen to this podcast. I think it's a recent one we po- po- posted under the uh, 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 Hello Fada podcast series. So uh, if you like the introduction here, it's going to tell you a little bit more about what that podcast is like. So take a shot. By Mac and O, an Irishman you'll always know, they say, because he wears the Irish for his name each and every day. Oh, you have to say that again. I I do. <laughs> you do. I want to hear that again. Well, an Irishman you'll always know, they say, for he wears the Mac and O before his name every single day. Okay. 
It was a little different that second time, but yeah. we're talking on the fly here, you see. <laughs> so you're making things up, are you? No, it's the spirit. That All is right. an old saying. It's a very old saying. And since I have the O before my name, I thought it was fitting that I memorize it. Oh, that's very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you know about Mac and O? I know there's a lot of confusion out there about Mac and O. I know uh, that, that when I first started researching uh, family history back in the 80s and the or late 70s, I read in a book and it'd say, well, you know, your name could have been a name, could have had an O in front of it, or it could have had a Mac in front of it. And I thought, okay. And it could have been dropped right. because I, oh, okay. Or it could have never had one. That never had one. Or, and I, at the time I thought, how oh, terrible. It could have started off as an O name. And then somebody put a Mac on it when they, they didn't know what it was in front of it. And they wanted to be Irish. So they put the Mac in front of it. Well, that ends the excerpt from the uh, Hello Fauna podcast for today. But we talk more about Irish names and about some uh, some different prefixes t- kind of things that they have. So uh, it's interesting. If you like Irish names, you like Irish family history, you'll like that podcast, I'm telling you. And you might even learn a very little bit about the Irish language if you're a curious sort of person. Uh, now we've got coming up the uh, the book of the day here, I guess, or it could be the book of the month. Depends on how much you like it. It's coming up here right away. Well, you know, you'll hear some people talk about the Milesians or King Milesius when they talk about the old days and legend. And uh, this book is called A Genealogical History of the Milesian Families of Ireland. And who were the Milesians? Well, you know what? They were... uh, they were Celts. They were part of one of the Celtic migrations that came to Ireland, and they're the most noted in history. And I don't know if that's just because a few people picked up that name and used it and forgot about the others or not. But in other words, they were the Celts, or at least one wave of the Celts in Ireland. And uh, this is an original work from the 19th century by de Courcy. And uh, that stands out as one of the few works of its kind that was really produced up to that date. And no other work of the era brought forth uh, more information in such a concise and easily stood, st- easily understood format. Even though some of the information might not be correct in light of current day uh, discoveries, it was a real important start, and it tells you where some of these histories on Irish families might have started. And uh, even the massive works by people like John O'Hart uh, when he did the landed gentry and that, uh, they don't allow the same overview and uh, they were uh, bulky and expensive by comparison, but the old uh, Milesian families book was small, easy to get to, and condensed, and uh, that helped a lot of people get in touch with some of their roots, I'm telling you. And, uh, hey, even the classic 20th century work by uh, Patrick Wolfe uh, didn't appear until some 40 years after this book, and, uh, of course, nobody can complain about what uh, the Reverend Wolf did. He did a great job of collecting things, and... Uh, Gosh, you know, as with any work of this type, you're going to have to find documentation of what was said because you can't really find proof within the text on most of that those things. But it gives you a place to start, and it gives you something to prove or disprove. And uh, what can you say about those ancient legends and pedigrees that stretch, stretch all the way back beyond our imagination? Well, they're laid down in this book in short order, and uh, bring your judgment with you. The closer we come to... Uh, Gosh, I guess the 20th century now, the more sure we are the facts will be. Or is that right? But make no mistake about it, uh, this is a noteworthy and valuable work, if for nothing else, to check and double-check our current records. Uh, I went ahead and put the outline of that book into the blog, the whole outline. It tells you what you got. covers an awful lot of uh, territory. uh, uh, But it's interesting if you like the old books or the old genealogy and you want to know where all this started at and who were the, fir- the people that really continued the old tradition of some of those old bards? Uh, I think you'd enjoy it if you got it. It's a small book, but it's a good one, and it's an old one. Hey, got to remind, remind you that we've got a blog, and we also have a podcast right here. Actually, we've got seven different podcasts, and we also have a uh, blog reader where the computer reads the blog to you in case you, uh, you'd you like to sit back and have a, a glass of sherry or something while you listen to the blog. I don't know. Uh, but coming up, what surname is uh, connected to the first Irish imam in Ireland? We'll be telling you about that. But now it's time for 
raising our eyes skywards, giving thanks and asking for help, here are today's magnificent seven. Number one, John Black of Crestwood, New Jersey. Your book of Irish families, great and small, has shipped. Number two, Noeline Quinlan of Queensland, Australia. Your book of Irish families shipped. James N. Wright of Dell City, Oklahoma. Your families of County Cork has shipped. Susan Kimball of Rehoboth, Massachusetts. Welcome as a member. Looking for Kylie and Glenn Fless, County Kerry. Uh, uh, and a few more things. I've got that on the blog. That includes uh, Patrick Kiley, who married Mary Cronin in the early 1800s. Number five, Dennis Garvey of Bowling Green, Kentucky. Welcome as a member in your Irish family's book shipped. Number six, welcome new member Donald McFadden of London, Kentucky. Your county Antrim, Ireland book has shipped. And number seven, Susan Kennedy of Oakland, California. Your families of County Clare has shipped. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, Clare is where those O'Laughlin came from that uh, I first started to research. So you might say County Clare and the O'Laughlins are responsible for this whole mess we have going here. Isn't that something? But I hope you enjoy the book. Plenty of Kennedys were there as well. And that reminds me to tell you thank you because without you and your help and your membership and the purchase of the books, we wouldn't be here. We couldn't even broadcast. So thanks a lot. Well, let's take a look at the Irish family name of the day, and that is McFadden. And uh, that's in honor of Donald McFadden, who's looking for William and Cander McFadden, both residing in Northern Ireland early to mid 1700s. So he's way back there in his research. Boy, he could help anybody out there, I bet. Uh, plenty of spellings for the name. You can have a Mac before the name. Uh, the Fadden, which starts with an F, could actually start with a P or even a PH. Uh, going back to a little older method of spelling. Some people even ag abbreviate it to Fadden or uh, Fagan is, has been confused there, I think. And even Fedden. There's all kinds of names. We've got it listed on the blog if you want to take a look, but I think we've got 10 or 12 different spellings. Uh, it's part of the variant spelling groups number 571, 1322, and 1464. And that's from the guide to the various spellings of Irish families' names. Got a link on the blog. Now, if we take a quick look at, look at some of the history of the name find in our library, uh, the name McFadden is a name of Northern Ireland and, uh, and of Ulster as a whole, really. Uh, the name being of both Irish and Scottish heritage, according to reports. Now, McFadden, from which the name was originally taken, stands, from son of, stands for son of Patrick. And without that Mac, Mac prefix, we find the name more often in Mayo than elsewhere, but the Mac was there in the beginning, I think. Now, Donegal is said to be a homeland of uh, the Irish families of the name, the old Irish, and at least where you can possibly distinguish between the two. Sometimes it's difficult. Uh, but the Malaysian family book that we talked about, that gives the name as a Scottish one in at least one instance, arriving in the 17th century and settling in County Antrim. And, of course, that would have been part of that that uh, really tumultuous century, uh, uh, century where so many new people came in to uh, settle in Ireland and so many old families got displaced from their land. So that's a time period to keep an eye on if you're researching your family back beyond the famine. Uh, now we took a quick look in the Irish Book of Arms and we didn't find a, a link for that name in there, but so many good Irish names aren't included in there. You just had a few that made it and of course Sometimes those were the ones who were the most friendly with the Queen, so they got put in that Irish Book of Arms, I think. Uh, so you can take a pro or con on that. Uh, hey, coming up later in this work, we've got uh, a little note on why Sheila the Elephant was in Belfast or what that story was all about. Uh, I found that. That's curious. I've reported on that for a couple years now. They keep bringing back these old stories. Uh, it's really interesting to see what you can learn when you start studying history. Uh, we're going to be talking here in just a second about the uh, free master index online at irishroots.com where you can type your name in and pull up uh, all the sources that I've uh, printed and, and published on, on the name. And that helps you, might help you tell what counties the name would be more prominent in when it comes up or if it's a widespread name or if it's a specialized name in Ireland. So uh, keep that in mind. The next segment, we're going to type in the name of Fadden and see what it pulls up for McFadden or even an old Fadden. Oh, 
Okay, well, I think almost all of these, we've got 28 returns here on the computer screen I, I, I can see that we used on that free index, and uh, you can do the same thing. But we've got it in. Let's just take seven of them. We found the name in the families of County Donegal, which confirms the little history we just gave before, and in County Antrim, Ireland, genealogy and family history notes, as well in the same uh, series, the Mayo and Dairy books right there. So, you know, that's all, all towards the north. And number five, Hey, we even found it in Irish families on the California Trail, which of course is in America. And we also find it listed, as you, as you would expect, in the Mac, Mick, and O names from 17th to 20th century records. That's a book I don't talk about much. I'll have to cover that a little more often so you know what it is. And number seven, names of Irish passengers to America. We had several listings in that, so there's no problem finding records of the name McFadden. It's just a matter of figuring out which ones are yours. And uh, remember, you can look for your name in that index, too. You don't have to necessarily buy a book, but it'll tell you what counties the name was found in. You can add that to the little puzzle of your Irish family history. And one day it may help you come to a conclusion that leads to a great success in your research in Ireland. Ooh, I hear, I hear that music now. Well, it's around the world in Irish ways. This is the web pages and the videos of the month. What did we pick out here? Well, let me see. Well, I took uh, number one, John McFadden, 1730 to 1811, Scotland, Ireland, America. Uh, that's on free pages there. I've got a link on the blog if you're interested in that family. Took one more of the McFadden family name uh, on YouTube. You can take a look at that. Uh, got a link on the blog to it too. Number three, Irish history and genealogy books timeline. I figure since we talked about that old 19th century book and there's so many of them uh, to look at, that might be helpful. That was one of my uh, uh, the videos I recorded last year, and I need to get back on that. But first, I've got to get the Irish Song and Recitation podcast going again. I've got so many to catch up on. Uh, number four, uh, here we selected the tunnel under the Shannon River that was opened uh, early for the very special people, don't you know, the walkers. And uh, cars are going to be charged a small fee when it's officially opened later this year. Uh, but boy, what a change. That river has been, uh, has figured in a lot of wars and a lot of defenses. And even the Vikings used it to make uh, incursions into Ireland and had their home base there down by Limerick. Uh, interesting videos, interesting thoughts. Uh, that's it for the uh, official videos and web pages. Just want to remind you, I'm working on two more books, one on DNA and genealogy and how that helps us trace our Irish ancestors. You know, that R1B or M222, what's that mean? Or M22, I I'm telling you, you've got to do some research, and I am, and I've got people helping me figure out what it's all about. We're also going to do one on the first season of the Irish Song and Recitation Festival with words and music and sheet music covers, so stay tuned for that. But now it's time for Curious News and Notes. <laughs> got more Irish millionaires than uh, last year anyway. Maybe not as many as five years ago, I don't know. But Merrill Lynch says the number of millionaires in Ireland has grown to 18,200. That's an increase of nearly 2,000. And uh, although it's small compared to the number of millionaires in the entire world, it's pretty darn good for Ireland. That's just a little island in the ocean, don't you know? Uh, got that out of the Belfast Telegraph link on the blog. Number two, Waterford City Visitor Center uh, is up and beaming once again, and it's future May sparkle. Uh, hope you get that glass factory up and moving, or at least some pieces going. Uh, you can read about the whole story in theexaminer.ie. Got that on the blog. Number three, Sheila the Elephant Calf was kept uh, in the backyard of this lady in Belfast during the War Blitz of 1941. Now they've written a child's book about it. Uh, Irish culture and cus customs linked to that on the blog. Number four, London cheers the 1916 rebels. Is this stupid or what? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I shouldn't really speak. But <clears throat> since I do have an opinion, they've been calling it river dance with guns, which I don't particularly like that phrase either. Uh, and it's playing in London, and I guess it gets some applause. But uh, 
I don't know. It might be a little bit too early to start romanticizing a war with so much bloodshed and heartbreak and, uh, and violence. It might be best to let that wait another generation, but that's just my opinion. Number five, a certificate of Irish heritage has been announced by the Irish government. And uh, I guess we need a certificate now to prove our heritage. Seems a little strange. Doesn't even seem Irish to me to have a certificate. Uh, but for those who do not qualify for citizenship, you could get this little piece of paper. Uh, and maybe that would give you some discounts when you traveled. I think it takes more than a piece of paper to prove who you really are. But uh, they may charge you for the honor, so I don't know. But the Department of Foreign Affairs and Lord knows how many committees are sure to get involved in this. And uh, it may end up being good after all, but my, my, how times have changed. Number six, speaking of Waterford, first Irish imam promotes mosque in Galway. That's Imam Ibrahim Noonan from Waterford is said to be the first Irishman to be an imam. So if you're a Noonan, you've got an imam in the in the greater family, I guess you might say. Uh very interesting. Let me see. You need a certificate of Irish heritage. You know, at one time, I think you had to write a letter to say you weren't Irish if you wanted to get a job or have any fun. Now they're going to give you a certificate so you can go to Ireland and spend your money. I think that's a very interesting proposal. Well, we've been having a good time at the uh, Irish Roots Cafe these last few weeks. And of course, the Dublin Irish Festival is coming up. Uh, what is that? Around August the 6th. That's Dublin, Ohio. Got a five-hour class. We're going to have uh, DNA, genealogy, how to uh, broadcast your family history on the net, and a whole lot more. So uh, don't miss it. That's going to be fun. I want you to register as soon as that uh, becomes available online. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history, of the Irish in America and on 2000 years of Irish history as well as on the counties and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important and write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way... A big thank you to all of our members, and away. <laughs>